So here are two examples of a variation problem. So the first one, y varies directly as x and inversely as z. If y equals 10 when x equals 9 and z equals 12, find y when x is 16 and z is 10. Now variation problems typically follow this format. In fact, typically as in 99.99% .99 of the time. So as soon as I slide my page, you'll see I have it all set up because I know how it works. So the first thing we need to do is come up with our base model. So the base model is the relationship between y, the square root of x, and z. So y varies directly as square root x. That looks like this, y equals k, your constant of variation, times the square root of x, and inversely as z. That means the z goes in the denominator. So inversely puts whatever factor that is in the denominator. So that's the base model. I know the next thing that happens, so we do this first, pick your base model. They are going to tell me everything about x, y, and z at one point in time. So let's read that. If y equals 10 when x equals 9 and z equals 12, pause at the comma. So y, this is our known info. y equals 10, x equals 9, z equals 12. Now pause, pause for a while, and we're going to come over here, and now we have to find k. So we're going to use 1 and 2, our base model, our known info, to figure out what k is. So plug all of your numbers in for their appropriate letters. So 10 equals k times the square root of x, which is 9, divided by z, which is 12. Okay. And we need to solve for k. So doing some math there, let's see, multiply both sides by the 12. Yes, there's another way, but this way is fine. So 120 equals k times square root of 9 is 3. Divide everybody by 3. It looks like k is 40. I found k. Okay. Now, the third step. Okay, well, that was a big step. So 1, 2, this will be our third step. It was a big one. The next step is super easy. We just write a new and improved model. So we're going to take our base model, and all we're going to do is substitute that value we just found in for k. So our new and improved model, y equals 40 times the square root of x divided by z. Now this new and improved model will work for any values of x and z as long as they hold that same relationship above. Okay. So last step, answer the question. Oh, so I'll slide. Back up to the comma. We're done pausing. <gasps> Find y. So y equals when x is 16 and z is 10. So y equals what if we know x is 16 and z is 10? So we're going to take our new and improved model, plug in the new values that we have, and figure out what y is. So y equals 40 times the square root of x, which is now going to be played by 16, divided by z, which is 10. So doing those calculations, However your brain's going to do it, square root of 16 is 4, divided by 10. I'm going to go ahead and slash those zeros now. 4 times 4 is 16. So I've answered the question, and we're done. So y is 16 if x is 16 and z is 10. Okay, so let's do a problem now that has um, a few more words in it. We'll have to parse a little bit more out and come up with our own variables. So this is an example with squirrels, rabbits, and raccoons. Okay, so number of rabbits varies directly as the number of squirrels and inversely as the number of raccoons. And we know, right, when there were 10 rabbits, there were 40 squirrels and 2 raccoons. How many raccoons would there be if there are 5 rabbits and 20 squirrels? Oh dear. Okay, I'm going to put in something here. We have to figure out what letters we're going to use. And unfortunately, I've got two things that start with R. How about a B for the rabbits? So B will be my rabbits, bunnies. Um, 
S for, how about Q for squirrel, so I don't try to make it be a five. And R can be my raccoons. So I'm going to have my little clue up here in case I need to look at that. Same thing though, base model. Ready? Rabbits varies directly. So rabbits equals K times number of squirrels. We're going to use a Q for that. And inversely means fraction as the number of raccoons, which we're going to use an R for. Rabbits varies directly as squirrels, inversely as raccoons. Okay. So it doesn't look like I can have everything on the screen at the same time. So you can either have copied that down, you can go back, but our known info. At some point, I have to know how many rabbits, squirrels, and raccoons I have all at the same time. So let's see. When there were 10 rabbits, there were 40 squirrels and two raccoons. Okay, stop. Find K. So use your base model in your known info to solve for K. So B gets played by 10. K times 40, number of squirrels, divided by the number of raccoons. Multiply both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 40. It looks like K is 1 half. If you want to pause and do that calculation on your own, make sure you believe me. Okay, and then our new and improved model. It's just our old base model with the K value plugged in. B equals 1 half Q over R. You could make that a 0.5 if you had to, or you could have it Q over 2R. Convince yourself. Okay. So now answer the question. Oh, B equals here. So I'll slide down so you can read the question again. It says, how many raccoons would there be if there are five rabbits and 20 squirrels? How many raccoons? That's the thing we don't know. Rabbits are five, and we used a B, and squirrels are 20, and we used a Q. So we're going to grab our new and improved model. I don't care which one you go. I'll take the first one, just in case. That makes you feel better. So B, number of bunnies is five. K is one half. We figured that out. Squirrels is 20, and we want to know how many raccoons? So the R stays in there so that we can solve for that. But now we have to solve for that. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's see. Um, 1 half times 20. I think I'll make that a 10. So now I have 5 equals 10 over R. How about cross multiply in that proportion? Or maybe solve by just observation? I'm going to hope you guys are going to let me get away with that. Ah, okay, I won't. Cross multiply. 5R equals 10, so R equals 2. Let's see, does that make sense? If 10 rabbits and 40 squirrels correspond to 2 raccoons, would 5 rabbits and 20 squirrels, so my number of squirrels went down by a factor of 2, my number of bunnies went down by a factor of 2. Squirrels went down by a factor of 2. Bunnies went down by a factor of 2. So the number of raccoons stayed the same. OK, I'm comfortable with my two raccoons. OK, I hope this helps you solve all of your variation problems.